everybody, it's me, Valerie from Valerie Walls Fine Arts, and I'm here in my and I'm here in my basement studio in Oral Maine, 04473, and we are having our Sunday night uh, Zoom art class, and you are live, and I am recording for a, you can't even, you're not even in there, she's trying to hold, there, <laughs> thank you, thank you, and we're, too bad we weren't supported by what brand, nice. brand cider this is, um, so tonight we're going to do this tried and true um birch trees fall autumn birch trees the only tricky thing we have in this picture is the fact that we have a little sky here where we have yellow painted over it and when you paint yellow over something it's tough because the yellow doesn't um have a lot of power and if you make your sky very blue it will be hard not to get your leaves not to be green I mean, one of, the, one of the answers to that problem is to just make them more orange. But if you paint orange over blue, it makes it a little brownish, okay? So we're gonna probably do two layers of the leaves, but just keep that in the back of your mind, especially if you're drawing. So when you're drawing, when, you, when, it, when we fill the sky in, which isn't gonna be the first thing we do, but just don't put anything there, okay? If you choose later on that you wanna have a bright, blue sky you can just poke it in around the leaves later okay because um that will work easily and that will that will if you like to have that rather than this drab kind of gray sky okay all right all right so for those of you that didn't get it yet this is what i've got for colors okay i have i have a lot of a lot of yellow i have two whites two yellows one of the yellows is going to be, you know, darker orange, and one is probably going to be lighter orange or yellow or whatever. I've got a little bit of green. If you if you don't have green, you can use your um, yellow and blue to make green. If you have any green, just that'll be fine. Um, I have a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. And this is a little tiny bit of black um if you feel like that's what you want for your birch trees i i don't think i'm going to use the black but we'll see and then i have the umber for my brown which is like chocolate pudding or like nutella it comes in, i have it in a jar up to show you it's like it looks like it looks like pudding it's delicious okay all right so and then with the um if you're drawing i have a lighter blue for the sky i have an olive green for my trees kind of I have a, oh, I guess I have a dark green maybe for my trees. I thought it was black. I have a light gray. This is important. This is what we're gonna start with. I have some white. I have a yellow, an orange. I should have a red one too. I don't know where that rolled off to. And then I have um, a sienna and I have, well, that's another green. That's just to confuse you. So the only other thing I needed was like a red. <laughs> I'm going to start with my my medium sized brush. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to save the area where our trees are going to go, because um, the whole actually, if we were painting with this group at Governor's, we would probably put the trees on after we did the background because it would have there would be plenty of time. They would be dry. We'll paint that white right over it. It would work out great. The problem is, is that we're painting and, or we're draw, painting and we're drawing. And if I did that with a drawing, you wouldn't be able to draw them on top. So just to, so that we can work together, we're going to start with the trees and we'll work and we'll kind of paint around them. When you're painting around the trees, don't worry, you're gonna paint them again at the end and touch them up, okay? So obviously if we painted white on white, it, would, it won't show. So we're gonna make it gray. And you'd be surprised, it can be a relatively dark gray and still work. Okay. Um, it's what happens is it gives it, it naturally will give it a little sh shadow for later. So to make gray, this is one of my tried and true ways to make the gray is to take, um, a little bit of blue. Okay. A little bit of brown, put those two together. When you, I mean, it looks kind of greenish on the, I can't do it backwards. 
It looks a little greenish. That's probably because my, this is so blue too, but the thing is, is I don't want too much paint. So just kind of wipe some of that paint off on the plate. And um, let's go this way. Let's take white and we'll add it in over here. Okay. It's going to be, my, you know, it's a little bit of a bluish gray. And if you're going to draw, then find the lightest gray you can come up with. Which I mean, I guess if you don't have a gray and you have a pencil, you could, you could do that. It's not my favorite choice, but. Um, okay, good. Yeah, all right, good. I think we're good. Get a little water in there. Doesn't need to be super thick. Okay. The trees are going to stop, start at the top of the page and they're going to run down. Okay. I changed the, this picture to only have four trees in there. If you are really particular about how you paint and you're careful, you could put two trees, you could put one tree in there. If you are somebody that's kind of like, you know, easygoing and like likes to throw in a forest, then throw in, you know, five or six trees. But I made it four and they're slightly different sizes, okay? And in the past, we've made kind of a shadow off the bottom, but we're not gonna do that with this one. I'm not, we're just gonna make a darker section down here. All right, you line I'm down, it's a little dark. If you have yours a little lighter, it's probably better, but okay. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint four lines. I make this one a little bit thinner. They're not all going to go to the same place in the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of them to make a little bit wider. It's probably the one that's closest to me. If you have trees lean a little bit, great. I'm going to make this one closer to that one so that they don't look too much like a ruler measured them out or like that. So I'm going to pick this one right here and I'm going to make this one a little wider. If you make one wider, then the other ones will look skinnier without you having to do anything. Okay. Don't worry about it being a flawless line or anything because, you know, we're painting and, and painting is, you know, it's a natural thing you do. It's not something you do with a ruler or you do with a computer. You know, it's natural. Natural. Okay. On my drawing, I'm going to draw with a gray. Hopefully you can see it. We'll see what happens. Um, not too heavy, but there's one there. Maybe I'll make this one a little wider. I'm not gonna go too thick. Bring that down there. Yeah. And maybe a skinny one. Some people make really delicate little trees when they get wet. It's not like that. You know, it's not like what are they doing up there? No. No way. They're they're watching football because their golf tournament got brained out. All right. Good. Okay. Oops. I bet you're ready. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start in our background, and we're going to start with the sky. Okay. I'm going to have my um, same brush. Okay. This, like I said, this needs to be almost white. You can make it more colorful later, but almost white. So I think I will, uh, I have a little bit of that gray kind of mixed into my white. I think I'm just gonna kind of blend that in there just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little more blue because I don't think you'll see it if I make it too light. All right, just so you can see it. So what we want to do, and if you're going to draw, you know, something light blue, I have a, oh my goodness, okay. This is what we want to do. We want to draw the top of our mountains. It doesn't look like an EKG, you know, not pointy. I mean, I guess it could, but I don't think so. Um, and then we're just going to take that color and brush it up into the top. Okay. And then we'll paint the mountains a different color. All right. Um, it's a, it leaves a pretty good chunk at the top. It doesn't matter too much where you do it. I'm going to go down about a quarter of my page, I guess. 
and I can make a little kind of rolling line that kind of comes through here and about like that. Oops, can you see it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, and then from that, I'm going to paint up and I'm just going to use a little more white when I do it so that it's not too dark. I should take a little more white, I guess. If you want a different color, if you want, well, I, like I said, we just want it pale for now, but if you want to paint a sunset up there later or whatever, you know, do whatever you want. Or if you want a green sky or an explosion. Well, relax. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it on my drawing. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah, just basically pick the color you think you want to do your mountains and just leave the top white for now because we're going to draw over the sky with the leaves. And if you put too much color up there, it's going to, it's going to be hard to make them light. Okay, does that make sense? So choose whatever kind of a bluish color, grayish color you want to use your mouth to do for your mountains. The next thing we're going to do though, is we're going to paint in some light orange for our, uh, our hill, okay? There's a reason. There is a reason, I'll tell you about it later. Okay, so I'm gonna take a pretty big brush. This is just gonna be mostly filling in. Like I said, if you paint over the edge of your birch tree while you're painting the yellow in there, it doesn't matter, you know, it'll dry. I mean, if you have big lumps and chunks of paint, maybe kind of sweep them away, but don't worry about it. It will happen. You don't want to go super careful. It's, it's, it's a waste of your time. Okay, so I have a bigger brush and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make it just a little bit of an orange. Okay, so a little bit of red is gonna go a long way. All right, and I'll put it in one of these yellows. If you want your picture, to be um, a little more November-ish, or just maybe you're not as crazy about bright orange. If you put a little bit of brown, not, the umper isn't the greatest choice. If you have a sienna, that'll work great. And you could make it a little more uh, of a natural color. Okay, so I have a nice orange, all right? And this is what we wanna do. We wanna draw in this hill. So, this is the sky we're going down to where the hill is. So it's not really very far. So from here, I'm gonna go down just a little bit, maybe here, and then I'll find where I, where I wanna head over here, which is maybe, eh, maybe about here. And I'm just gonna go over and then kind of go down. You know, if you have a steep hill, you have a steep hill. If you have a not much of a hill, that's okay too. All right, and then I'm just gonna take this and fill this in. All right, so this should be nice. If you have varying shades of orange, that's okay. But we're gonna paint it a second time to, to get some grassy feel to it. This is just kind of a primer. So if you're coloring, if you're drawing, you can, if you're drawing and you feel like, you know, Deb, you can like start a little lighter, more yellow here, add a, you know, can start with, cause it's gonna take a little more coloring to fill it in, so. Feel free to blend in different shades of orange if you want, if you're already drawing. They're a little bit different. If you have, um, if, you're, if you're using paint that comes from a tube, rather than like those little bottles, like I wanna say they're called, I wanna say they're called Crate and Barrel, but I know that's not what it is, but Apple Barrel or something, they have a lot of water in them, so you don't need to water it down. But if you're using a tube of paint, you're gonna to wanna to put a little water with it or otherwise it's just, you'll, it won't dry. Um, if it's too thick, it won't dry very fast. Although it wouldn't matter with this, but that way you can get a little bit lighter coat on there. 
All right. Okay, so I'm going to color a little bit while you get that part done. Um, I'm actually going to go a little bit lighter with the. So I'll start up here. Go down. I'll go a little lower on this one, maybe. Yeah, I really don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's why he messaged me. That all makes sense. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is to paint the color of the mountains, okay? Because we want these trees, I think we want them to be really dark. If we paint the mountain color from the sky all the way down to the orange, it'll be kind of an undercoat for the green and it will make the green come out a lot darker. As long as we give it a little time to dry, which we will. So. I'm gonna color, I'm just gonna forget about the trees for now. I'm gonna color this whole section kind of a bluish gray. If you're drawing, um, it probably won't hurt to do the same thing because it does take quite a bit of coloring to make something like this dark, okay? So you can pretty much do the same thing. So pick, pick the color you want your mounds. I mean, if you want your mounds purple, if you want your mounds green, whatever, it's fine. Whatever color you want. I'm gonna take, I think the gray, let's see, maybe I'll take the color, the color I was using for the sky and I've got some of that gray left over from here and I'll just take some of that and put that in there. So I wanted a little bluish gray. Or you could just put blue and white together too. The thing is, is it has to be darker than the sky. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put that here on my hill. And if I can, when I come to my grass, if I paint up and down against that orange, it's going to create kind of a rough edge to it and it will look a little grassy. Again, I'm going to try to smooth this out so that it will dry. Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna use this one. Okay, so I have my, it's, it's kind of a periwinkle blue. If you have a blue and it's just a little too dark or a little too bright, you could add a little um, gray or just even a little white to kind of soften it. Sometimes you just don't have what you need. And you know, with pastels and colored pencils, you should go into it with the idea that you're gonna use two pencils on everything you make, two different colors. And you'll, if, if no matter what they are, even if, even if it's, you know, something that's green and you add brown to it or red to it or orange to it or light green to it, no matter what, purple, no matter what you do, it's gonna affect the color and it's gonna make it seem more sophisticated just because you've done more than just pick the one, you know, one out of 12 colors you have in your box and be like, ah, I'm gonna color everything green, this color green. Pick something else in there, try something out, anything. You can't go wrong. You put three colors together, you might make a mess, but two colors, 
always something good. Three colors might make a great color, but it'll take a, more, a little more practice to guess how that's gonna come up. All right, so maybe, yeah, I don't wanna put any white on the lower part because that's gonna be the dark tree, so I don't wanna do that. But I put a little white pastel up on the top, maybe, kind of soften that against the sky. All right. What band is this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What I do is this. It's, it's take your medium sized brush. Okay. And one of the things about using acrylic paints is that you have white, and white works kind of like an eraser because you can basically paint something white and it's the color of your paper, and you can just sort of start all over again. So we're going to, um, in a, in a sense, kind of erase a little bit up here to put these, these leaves on there. And so what I want to have you do is not make it white, but you're going to take a little white and a little yellow. Okay. Um, so I'll take a little of this white and I'll take a, a nice amount of yellow, like more yellow than white, put those two together. And the white will just make the yellow a little more opaque. And that'll happen, I think, no matter what kind of paint you have. If you're going to draw, um we're gonna just do a quick beginning to like what our where our leaves are gonna be this is the thing about it though is that the top of your picture the leaves go all the way across because they're coming out of these trees and they're huge up above what is what we can't see is going to be tons and tons of leaves up there so you don't want i don't think you do anyway little tiny arms that look like they have weenie forks on the end with a couple of little leaves stuck out there. The idea is that you know, the branches are going out and then there are like tons and tons of leaves up there. So you want to get it up top and you shouldn't be afraid to fill in over in this section here a little bit with leaves, okay? If you really don't like it, you could probably paint a blue over it later. If you mix blue and white together, you probably could make paint it over, but I think you will like it. So I've got my yellow and my white together. It looks kind of like that. Oops, let me see. And I'm going to hold my brush a little bit like this rather than like a pencil. All right. And I'm going to pat on first. I'm going to go over the trees a little bit. And I'm going to bring it across the top. And I'm going to put more orange and red on them later. So I'm just starting out. This is just a way to start out. Okay. You, it's nice to have a few little pockets of sky but they're sort of random. This one has quite a bit like over here. Don't be afraid to go over the trunks because the leaves don't just come out of the sides of the trees. They're overlapping each other, okay? Again, pat, pat, pat. Um, maybe a little bit down on the mountains. Maybe don't go too low because then you'll have it where you're gonna put your dark trees, but over here, maybe a little out like this. Okay, it'll be something out there. You don't have to put them everywhere you think you're going to want your leaves, but it's something to start with. Um, you know, this one you can sort of see there's like little places where there's, you know, there's quite a bit right between those two trees. You know, you can pat a lot in there, and then maybe between a couple trees, you leave a little space. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit on my, uh, on my tree over here. Um, it be a little bit harder to go over the gray, but um, I'll go right across the top. What I'll do when I on my grit where the gray shows through, I'll put some orange or red on top of those pieces. That way I'll kind of cover it up. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of, you know, maybe I'm gonna go a little bit in a diagonal to the right, and then maybe I'll cross and go in the other direction, um, like kind of like big X-y things. I can't really do it over my mom. That's not going to work that well. That's fine. But I could bring it out here. I'm thinking a little asterisk -y. Do, 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 do. How's that look? Really good. This should be dry now. So let's go here. And we're going to put our dark trees in there. If you're drawing, you're going to find you know, a nice dark green. 
or a dark green and a light green or a dark green and a brown or a dark green and a blue. Like I said, two colors, always, always good. Well, we do have blue under here. I have some green. It's a little bright for my taste for this. I'm gonna add my brown to it, but I still want it to look green. So just enough brown to change it to a little dark foresty green, which won't be too much. A little bit goes a long way. A little, little blob like that. It's less than what I have. I'll put it in all that green. Yeah. You know, and when you look at the color, sometimes it's nice. I mean, when things are dark, it's hard to tell. So often I'll have a piece of scrap paper handy and you can just put it on that white piece of paper and then you can really see the color. You can also put it right on here and be like, eh, yeah, that looks all right. This is the deal. I think these trees, this is like you walk up this hill and you get to the top and it goes down and in the distance, you see another rise that has green trees on it. That's the case unless the trees follow the curve of this hill. If they follow the curve of the hill, then they're really at the edge of the, hip, the, the, the field. And the reason why I don't think we want them to be like that is that they would be a little closer and we would start to have, they would look bigger and they would also um, have more, a little bit more detail. So I like that they're, you know, another hill far in the distance, but not as far away as the blue, the blue mountain, okay? So in that case, the top line of the green is gonna be pretty horizontal. You don't want it to go with the roll of the hill. You want to kind of work against it. So one of the things you can do is to start and kind of like maybe make a dotted line. Maybe it goes up and down a little bit to show you where that's going to go. And then you're going to fill between up and down like this and up and down against the grass. And all you have to do is make the top, kind of brush it up here and there, and it will make little points. Especially if you have like a really, like a messed up bristly brush that has all the pieces all stuck out all over, somebody mashed with it. They work great for doing the tops of the trees because it will just come out all uneven. So I, I have a lot of bad brushes for stuff like that. But it should be dark enough to like, really offset this, this gold. Right. Nice. All right. And I'm not getting too, too close to the trees. I'm close, but just because I don't want to have them all turn green when it comes time. I can always make these trees just a little bit wider with the white, but if the paint's wet next to it, then it will be a little harder. Is that making sense? Does that look all right? Yeah, and so then if you want, if it's very, very, very horizontal, you know, take, take one little place where you just kind of add a little extra little triangle up here, maybe over here a little bit more. So you have a little irregularity to it, which is also pretty much the same thing. What did we just do? Oh, the, um, uh, what was it, Katahdin? All right, so I made a little dot, 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 dot. This is black. I have green. All right, I need it like that. So I've got an olivey green on there, and then I have a dark blue. I'm going to put a little of that on there too. And that's going to look super dark out there. Maybe I need a little more higher. You know what, if you wanted to put a little, um, a little weenie fork on your, you know, you just kind of brush, I mean, draw up a little bit, draw to one side a little bit. That'll give you those little points out there, but a foresty, furry tree line doesn't, if it, the farther away it is, the less you're gonna see any kind of detail or any kind of detail to the top of the trees either. 
And it's not the important part. You want to keep in mind, especially when you're working quickly in the beginning, you know, why are we painting this picture or drawing this picture? Veronica, why are we drawing this picture? Wow. Mm -hmm. And what do we, what did, why do we want to do it? Like, what's the title? Birch trees. Right. It's titled Birch Trees, not Fir and Pine Trees in the Distance. That's a different painting. So these are these are just supporting roles to the picture. All right, let's do it. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is some um, embellishment of our grass. Okay. This painter went in there and has lots of thick thick lines like this. It's a little lighter here. It's a little darker down here. That's pretty much it. You can do it any way you want to. Um, one of the things it's one of the things I, I sometimes say to people is that from about where my hands are up, you could just paint that a second coat. It's kind of like when you look out at the ocean and the, the waves closer to you, you can see waves, you can see white caps, you can see changes in color. But out at the horizon line, it's so far away that all the details um, get blurry. The same thing would kind of happen with the field that all the fun stuff is gonna be going on down here and this could be kind of smooth and it will look further away. It's using texture to show space. Um, but if you like painting it on there, and, and another thing you could do is use a big fat brush for your brush strokes down here and use a tinier one up here, okay? But ideally what we wanna do is get a second coat on here. And if all you do is paint it orange a second time, it's still gonna look better, okay? I am gonna take, my medium sized one. What I'm going to do first is just help you to get a darker bit down here. Okay. Um, and then obviously, you know, the more yellow you put on, the brighter it's going to look. You could use the yellow and white, or you, and you know, how much red you put on is going to make a darker orange and you can play around with that. And it's also something you could come back to when you're all done and be like, oh, I'm going to work on those, that grass again. Okay. All right. So to make a darker red, we can take um, a little brown. This is going to make a very like cool maroonish because that brown is so maroon. If you have a warmer brown, you're going to get more of a sienna, which is probably what I'll do with the painting. So it's almost like, it's almost like, it's not purple. It's because the brown has so much blue in it that it makes it kind of a purple color. Okay. You know what, if you, if you want to put green in there, you like green, you want a green lawn, make a green lawn or make a mixture of both. All good. If you want a purple field, make a purple field. It's just a painting. Okay. So I have this color. I want to bring that around the bottoms of my tree, okay? Because that's gonna help make them look like they're in the grass, which is one of, the, one of my keys. I wanna make things look like they're a part of what's there. All right, then I'll take that color and maybe not quite so thick, space it out a little bit, maybe diag get it down here a little. All right. I like that right up right along the bottom if anything i want this nice and dark so I, on this one i have a the sienna which is not super dark but i'll put that on there they are but it also looks like so big this would be if you're Using colored pencils, I always suggest, I mean, I guess I didn't, I haven't said it in a while, but kind of want to work smaller. I mean, it's intended to be a smaller piece, more like a five by seven, maybe an eight by 10, not an 11 by 14, unless you're really get ready to, to work on it in a while. That's why pastels are nice because you can do a bigger picture. Okay, so I have a little of that on there and then you know, sometimes if you have a little too much paint, you don't have to necessarily rinse it, but, you know, ju just wipe it on your cloth a little bit. Um, so I have this orange from before, 
Maybe I'll take a little more red, put it in some of the orange, make a darker shade. You know, and I can put that in here. And just kind of overlap. I like, I like the idea that maybe there's, you know, kind of a rolling little hill that affects. Maybe something like that. Um, I'm going to take a little more orange. So basically, you're just going to get a second coat of paint on here with whatever color you grab. If I take, if I have quite a bit of red on my brush and I just take a little yellow right from there, that will blend right on the picture. All right, so I'm gonna take, I know you might be at different places or whatever, but I'm gonna take, um, wipe this off a little bit. And I'm gonna put that, that yellow and white that we used up here on the leaves. I'm gonna put a little of that like right up here and it's gonna be nice and bright out there away from the trees. Okay. If you're, if you use a lot of white with your red, with your orange, it gets a little bit peachy which you know, may, or, may or may not be what you want. Um, the yellow and the sienna make kind of a gold. All right, so I need to get this filled in. I want to get a second coat in here anyway. I wash it like right with the boxes. Should we wash the boxes? Things like this. Everybody's different yeah. natural handwriting style kind of thing. Your the way you put marks on always comes out is you know becomes really important because there's no real right or wrong way of doing it. So you have to do what just comes natural to you, and then you have to be like, I love what comes natural to me. I love it because it's because it was fun because I didn't say, oh, I have to do it a different way. How are you guys doing over there? Great. Right. You know, and if you're a little more, um, you like, if you're light handed and you don't want quite so much second coat, do whatever, whatever is the thing you like. If you like pink and you want to make it more pink, make it more pink. It's not like we won't know what it is, right? I guess that doesn't even have to be something you care about anyway. The other day, one of the little kids was here and we were mixing up. We had a basically a brown or a beige. And I was like, well, so what color is this? And the boy's like, it's peach color. And I was like, if my peach was that color, I would be throwing it out. It was like disgusting. It was like totally gross brown. So sometimes color matters. Let's see. And yeah, you know, you put it on there too, and there's no reason why you couldn't like, you know, vary it a little bit more. Yeah. All right, so the same, you know, the same kind of colors, I think, you know, I mean, in reality, probably uh, birch trees leaves tend to be more light orange or yellow, but, you know, this is, this is not for the, um, is it botany? But no, forestry, the forestry manual. This is just for a picture. So you can make these leaves whatever color you want. Um, 
And I think the Pat Pat style works pretty well. Just this is one thing. I know I know a lot of you are busy or whatever, but if you if you didn't if you don't catch this, you don't catch this right. The thing about the leaves is that they're not in polka dots. If you look out at a leaf, a, um, an autumn tree, it doesn't look like it's yellow with red polka dots all over it. They kind of grow like they're, they're sections that are varying in color. So you don't want to take it and put a dot all over the place. Of, that's my brushes are very clean, but um, you know, you don't want spots like that. You're going to kind of put them in sections like, like this one, you know, it's a, it's quite orange all around. There's a little bit of gold. Actually, a lot of them are pretty orange. These are a little lighter to kind of show up against the dark, but so if you start with an orange, let's see. Something, I wouldn't go too dark red. Like I, I wouldn't use this, but a little bit of dark and then just keep going lighter from there. But if you put a few in here, like I have a color that's about like that. It's almost pumpkin orange. And if I put this, you know, maybe kind of in a little section, uh, maybe a little bit over here. I think this kind of thing, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't ever really look at it and go, boy, I love how I did those leaves. Those are awesome. Because it's hard. So random. But the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Just don't be too skimpy. I, I see that a lot. People really skimp on the branches, skimp on the leaves, and it's like, you know, unless you're gonna make a bear tree. Okay, so I'm going to put a few like that, and then I'm going to go with a lighter yellow, light orange. <laughs> I'm going to put, don't forget that we're going to do some, you know, nice, fun things to the trees. So, Again, <laughs> it's going to get better. A little more of that yellow and white in there. That'll lighten things right up. You don't have enough yellow? A few, few dots down low, maybe, or we can put a branch. Orange first, and then I'm just gonna go lighter from there. But yeah, and I was gonna, like I said, I the areas where I have the or uh, the gray tree showing through, I'm gonna concentrate on kind of covering that up with some of this orange so that it doesn't show too much. Yellow can. Oh, I can put a little down on the blue that shows. Find something kind of small. I have one like this. It's little. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of white on the birches. You can cover the whole thing or you can leave a little bit of the gray, depending on how gray it is. But it does look kind of good to have leave a little gray. And, and we didn't really do much with a light source, but it would be that the white was more on the right side and the gray would be more on the left. On the ones where you're drawing, um, you do the same thing, but you're gonna go over it with a white. The tricky thing with the drawing is that it's really easy to pick up the color that's next to it. 
which is not the end of the world. Don't, don't think, oh, what a waste. I made it and it doesn't look white because it's not going to look super white. Okay, but it doesn't matter because in reality, if you were there and you were looking at this white bark, you'd find that it does pick up the colors of the, the grass around it. Um, I keep a, a cloth handy so that if it get picks up the red, same thing with your paintbrush. If you um, pick up a wet, you know, it catches the white, something wet on the outside, have a brush, a cloth handy so that you can wipe it off. But I wipe that off. Okay, so I'm gonna do that in a minute, but that's that's what's gonna happen here. It's not gonna make them white, white. They're not white, white in here. And this one, the only place they're really white is just on the very outside. So, you know, you could make it a varying shade of gray too, but I'm gonna take my smaller brush. I'm gonna take some of the white just the way that it is. I don't wanna forget that there's a little bit of tree like up here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put a little up there. I don't wanna go hog wild with the paint because I do want it to dry a little bit so that I can get those black on there without it being too, all right, too um, grayed up. If you can't do it in a straight line, it doesn't matter because the trees are lumpy and bumpy and they have shape to them. Sometimes too, though, you could turn your paper horizontally if it's easier for you to work side to side than it is for you to go up and down. Um, sometimes it's just easier if, you get your, if you're on a table because you can rest your arm there. All right, kind of like that. You can, if it's dry, you can definitely make them thicker again too. You could probably even add one in there. So, um, <laughs> you're just doing it your way, baby. Good job. This is a video has At the bottom, be a little irregular about the edge so that it looks like it's tucked in the grass. You probably want to use your smallest brush. If if you don't have anything that's small, using the back end of your paintbrush, that is a good good to use in a pinch. One of my little kids told me that a long time ago especially for doing the highlights on the side. Okay, um, but, it, but you won't need a whole lot of paint, so that works okay too. You can, or you can use toothpick. It doesn't need to be super tiny, but I think you want to kind of be in control of, of how much paint you put on there. So just use that. Um, if you want to use the black, I think maybe what I'll do is do one of the trees with black and then I'll do the other ones with like a dark gray and you can kind of, uh, or you can try it out to side, but mm -hmm. The first, the first one I'm going to do is um, with the dark gray. Okay. okay. So I still have some of my umber, and I'm going to use that. I don't want any white in it though. And okay. I have some blue. I'm going to put some blue in there. Oops, I got white in there. I don't want it. Okay, there we go. You could use just the brown the way that it is, but the blue just, just um, 
you know, makes it a little less, it, a little more nondescript. You can't really say, what color is that? It's not just some, like something dark. All right. And I have seen birch trees covered in black, birch trees with almost no black, birch trees with polka dots, birch trees with asterisks, with slashes, anything you can think of for a mark to do. I feel like I've seen it and it always looks good. It doesn't matter what you put on there. I'll, I'll see these kids, these like four-year-olds and they start going to town and I'll be like, what is gonna happen with this? And they always look good. I don't know why, but it always does. So don't overthink, you know, what you want. I mean, if you want, you know, look up a picture of birch trees and, and just don't get too close to them because you have to remember that you're not super close to these. So whatever you want to use to go by, um, you should be the same distance away because otherwise it'll look too detailed for what you could really see. Okay. So yeah. I just usually go um, maybe down the edge a little bit. Like this is the gray. So you can see it comes out pretty dark. I'll go down the, the outside here. Some people outline both sides, but I'll take that maybe a little bit extra at the bottom. And I just kind of make like little three little lines together. Maybe skip up a little bit too. I don't know. This is the way I do it. It's always how I do it. All right. That's what the gray looks like. Um, let me do a black one and you can see whether you like that better. So the same thing's going to happen with the um, pastel. I think probably if you're using pastels or colored pencils that you probably want to use black or at least a dark gray, like a Payne's gray, something like that. All right, so here's the black one, looks like this. You know, it's just gonna be a little more intense. Maybe a little less natural, but maybe a little more exciting, you know. And I always kind of work from the, that, that black line into the white part. Do you use higher black line on the side? Yeah, kind of, kind of sketched it on there. Um, you know, and sometimes there's kind of those knots, so there's a little big blob. Sometimes they're just little pieces. If you hold your brush kind of sideways, it's going to mash out and be bigger. But if you hold it right perpendicular to your picture, you can get a littler line. And like I said, I mean, you can think a lot about it or you can do it just without thinking about it. And I, I've seen a lot of not thinking about it. It still comes out good. <laughs> Those the girls are a little gassy tonight. It's the carbonation. <laughs> well, yeah, are you I actually know. using black or are you using black? These two are black right here. <laughs> Where were you? I just said it. Well, I wasn't sure. You, it's, it's a rare occasion. That you I know. I know. But I did. I do, I'm doing both because I want to be um, fair. I love black. I love black. But... I did learn a long time ago that it's not always appropriate when you think it is. <laughs> yeah. No, my painting teachers. I didn't get it. I didn't know what they were talking about at the time. But I did figure it out later. It took a while. The other thing we're gonna do is put a couple of branches on there. So just, I'll give you a second to kind of do this and then you can kind of, if you're, if you're going slow, you can take a sack and look at the, the branches and then finish it, but yeah, I mean, I like how the, that black on are a little bit down that side looks good, but you can do it. You don't have to do it like that. That's kind of on how white your tree is too. Oh, some trees. A little bit of black up in the uh, branches is, is a nice uh, little bit of detail too. Okay. 
Yes, yes, yes. Very satisfied. Okay. Okay, so the deal with the with the with the branches is that you want them small, you want them light and skinny, I think, because I think that's what birch trees have. They don't have a big heavy limb so much like a maple tree. And they also um you the branches will overlap another tree. There's like, you could have these leaves could be part of this tree and the branch might start here and go over to those leaves. They're not, and they, but they also don't, usually the branches are gone on the lower part of the tree. So you're just dealing with a little bit up there. And I mean, if you look at this painting, there's just a little bit, there's just a sort of, they're almost just some kind of crisscrosses in the picture, okay? And she also kind of, or he kind of darkened up here. I wish I knew who made this picture. I, I have no idea, but I've had it around like years, years and years, but I have no idea who did it. Okay, so um, I'll just use the dark gray. That's what I'm gonna use. And like I said, so say I start with a, with a branch here on this tree, I might bring it over and be like, oh, stop at those leaves, come out on the other side you know, and bring it up into here, you know, maybe I, maybe I'll put a branch like that. I don't know. That's kind of thick. Okay. And then like, if you, that's a kind of a thick branch, thicker than I want, but, um, you know, just a little piece somewhere. Oh, maybe I want a little piece in that open little spot. Okay. Maybe something from this one, but crossing over the trees, to get to another one, all that stuff creates space. Whenever you overlap something, it means one thing is in front of the other. And on a flat piece of paper, that makes it look like it's not a flat piece of paper. And that's what we're trying to do whenever, you know, we're using all sorts of different ways to show space. And they're just things that you don't even think about. Like you just, who would think of that, about that? You just do it, you don't even know. You know, but your brain has been doing that since you were a kid and you reached out for a toy that was behind another toy and you, you know, you knew that you had to reach beyond. It's all, all in your smart little human brain. You take it for granted. Yeah, like that. And I'll put a couple on my, yeah, it just needs it. It's too, um, Too much light going on in here. I need a little dark. Don't forget if you have big gaps of trunk that show up in your leaves that you wanna put the black spots on them there too. Sometimes these are the things that you will see when you step back and you'll be like, oh, I could really use a little branch right there. And then you, then you sit it down and put it on there. All right. The best thing to do when you're done with your picture, before you put all your stuff away, Vicki knows all about this because she would do this at governor's with me, is that we put our pictures up six feet away and take a look at it. And you might look and say, oh, I forgot that. Or, oh, I wish I'd put a little more dark down here or a little more light here, or that's uneven you're going to see it. You're also, I almost guarantee it, be like, mm, that looks pretty good, you know, because they really meant to be seen from a distance. So it will look better. You'll also be able to catch maybe some little thing that you want to fix before you've put all your stuff away. Um, that being said, I think, I think we're pretty much done. And look at all the people. How fun, how fun, my gosh, this is a great big group of you all. Are you guys ready? All right, one, two, three. Hey, Excellent. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's nice, Sarah. Super job. All right. Oh, oh, hi, Janet, how are you? Oh, Deb, Deb, you worked hard, good for you. Deb, I like the haircut, it's cute. Hi, Ellie. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Good night, Susan. Thank you.